Hello, it's Ram. In this tutorial, I want to show you how to make a simple but powerful data structure right inside Godot. Most games need to define items like weapons with stats and behaviors in an RPG. In this tutorial, we will use an example from my farm game, so we will be defining fresh products such as vegetables. There are a few ways to do that. You could use a spreadsheet and convert it to JSON, then load it inside Godot. The main limitation is when you need to define something like a recipe that have a variable number of ingredients. So there is another alternative, CastleDB. It is basically a database manipulation interface that allows you to export and import JSON files. It seems pretty good and I almost started using it, but I decided to make my own structure right inside Godot and I don't regret it. Let's start by making a game object with a list of products as an inventory. A product is defined by its parameters. In this simple case, a name, a quantity, and a freshness. The init function is the constructor. Then we define a function, update freshness, to simulate the product going bad over time. So the freshness will decrease in this case by one every day. Then using the toString method will allow us to display, to print the product. We can now create a few products and add it to the inventory. We can already start to see a problem that we have to type a string every time we want to make a new product. The next day function advances the day by one and updates the freshness of the products of the inventory. And the display inventory function simply prints the products to the output. To test our little system, we display the inventory, then we advance the day by one and we display the inventory again. And we can see the freshness of the products decreased. Now say we want to have control over the decay of the products. So we add the aging rate and include it in the freshness function. So we can now specify the aging rate when we create a new product. We already see there's a, this is another problem because we'll have to do it every time we create a new product. So we'll, we would need to remember, oh, the apple is one or four. So we need to find a better solution. We create a script called product data, which will hold all the information that defines the behavior of a specific product. So there will be a, uh, a number, the name, the aging rate, and a description, for example. The product enum is simply an ID that will allow us to create products without having to type a string, and we'll define it later. So in the product class, we can now remove the name and the aging rate and replace it with the product data instead. We could now use our product data to create the product in the inventory, but that doesn't solve the problem that we have to remember all the parameters every time we create a new product. So we will create a database instead. We will define the product data for once, and then we'll use it every time we want to create the same product. The enum here is what I was talking about earlier. The names dictionary allows to associate a name to a product enum. The description will associate a description to the product enum. And then we have the data dictionary that will actually hold all the product data that we create with those functions. The function add product data is simply a way to simplify the creation of new product data. So I won't have to type the product enum multiple times. In order to access the database from everywhere in the program, I create a global singleton named DB just for short for database. And then I create the product database from this global database. So it's now as simple as calling the product enum to get the product data. As you can see, this could be scaled up to a very complicated structures. And I can show you quickly. So this is the database of my game Buzzy Field so far. We have, for example, the product database, the seed database, the animal, recipes, buildings, animal buildings. 
and all of them follow the same structure as we describe in this tutorial. So this is, for example, the product database of Buzzy fields. All of the products are defined here. Then we have the names and the actual data being loaded. Please let me know what you think and how we can improve this technique. Well, I hope you enjoyed. Have a very good time and stay tuned on the channel to get the latest news about my game Buzzy Fields. I'll see you soon and get creative.